Hello everyone, this is Ron from High Tech Legion and this is a part of our uh, Javelin S4 media server review and we are going to take a look at the Javelin dashboard and a web PASM interface used to control the Patriot Javelin S4 media server. So now I'm just going to launch the Patriot dashboard, uh, Patriot Javelin dashboard and here it is the first window you're going to see is the smart stick. You can see the controls at the top uh, via various tabs you have the smart sync which is the backup soft, uh, backup part of the software and you can just basically take any folder and you just uh, simply drag and drop here you can see from there and uh, at the bottom you have more options you to backup restore from a backup and schedule a list so you can uh, so even if you're away from the computer you can uh, have the uh, Javelin S4 uh, can back up a particular folder and the event log so you can uh, of course if you're away to computer you're not seeing uh, what's going on all the time so it's perfect that you can have an event log in here you can filter it from uh, either info or error uh, or you can also have the option of showing it all the uh, events that are inside uh, that happened during the backup and uh, finally you have the progress monitor right at the bottom because we're not backing up anything right now so there's nothing in there and uh, just going back again to the main window of the Javelin dashboard let me zoom in the camera further see uh, here on this uh, part right here you have the device list if you have more than one Javelin uh, Patriot Javelin S4 inside your uh, local area network it will detect it here but since we only have one so you refresh the device here see it and right at the bottom you have the you can actually see the system information which user is logged in it will ask you initial launch will ask you the uh, initial setup the default passwords of course username and passwords admin and it will log you into the administrator account at the beginning it will ask you that and uh, you can see here uh, how many drives are installed inside the Patriot Javelin S4 see I have two and the RAID level and the RAID status and RAID capacity. Uh, notice that the the, the, uh, the RAID options. I know that the Patriot uh, Javelin is designed for beginners. It's an entry level NAS. It's very powerful for entry level NAS. But uh, some of the options seem to be a little aimed to the beginners more than. Uh, and there there seems to be limited options for a little bit more experienced users. Well, it's not really a problem. Uh, let's zoom this out now and uh, so you can see the entire dashboard again. Um, I didn't find that a problem because since the Javelin dashboard is more a simpler interface and uh, aimed at more beginners than advanced users. Actually, there's an advanced you, um, I'm going to show you something here. Is the, there's an advanced setup option in the NAS management and it will uh, it will launch the uh, the web PASM part of the uh, Javelin control center. So uh, for now, we're going to go back to the setup wizard. This is actually an automatic thing. Speaking of uh, keeping things simple, this is, uh, is very convenient. You can see it's automatic, and it will set up your NAS as specified listed there. It will auto detect depending on your type of your uh, network you're running. It will just uh, pick up the default IP address for, and will set up if uh, the your, uh, for example, the your, your Windows or your Windows file sharing or your FTP sharing and everything else for your uh, media center and your shared folders you can see here you have the option of either running a one-click setup what you're looking at here it picks up so you picked up it, it uh, detected a NAS name and you have your time zone and date time ready install uh, ready detected from your windows install and the IP address will pick up as DHCP and the storage type depending on the drive you installed and the device mapping now for some reason in the manual it says device mapping it will, it, usually when you do the one-click setup it pops up and then it will ask you for a device mapping but uh, in, in my case in particular I didn't see that option although that's not a problem because if you click on the share folder you can actually uh, mount the device mount the folders here manually by itself we don't have a network drive set up right now and uh, since uh, for some as like I mentioned earlier I've been seeing some uh, there's there's a bit of complication when I'm running just a single drive or uh, tried doing a JBOD, but there doesn't seem to be options for JBOD. Only uh, RAID 0, RAID 1, and RAID 5, you have three drives. And uh, I'm actually going to going to launch the web uh, part of the uh, control center right now. 
because as you can see there's limited options right now for some reason the the on when i just have one drive uh one a single drive inside there doesn't seem to be options for the dashboard so i'm going to uh, launch the launch a web browser right now and launch the web pasm so i can control it better there and i will go back to the dashboard later on once uh, i have uh yeah let's see There you go, and uh, just see if I can zoom out, uh, zoom in the, uh, the zoom in Firefox. So I can read it. You can see here you have administration, download station, web file manager, web server, media center, iTunes server, and database server. Now you can, uh, as you saw on the dashboard, I'm going to go back to the dashboard uh, just for a little bit. Here you can see that there's a plugin option in the NAS management here in the right hand corner. There's a uh, where you can add a plugin. These are basically uh, the plugins installed are actually uh, it's not showing up right now. That's uh, one of the bugs I was talking about. There you go. The uh, it shows the some of the plugins installed. You have the iTunes servers so right? You, you can that's what you can see it in here. Uh, under under configuration plugin, you can add or disable plugins here, and will uh, obviously reflect on this uh, control window right here. So. Uh, now for now, let's go back to the web uh, controls. And first one is the administration, where you can do uh, the bulk of the controlling of your uh, Javelin. As you can see, I'm just moving the camera. Select to the left, and there we go. You can see what we have is a uh, just a single volume. And what's a good thing about it is that you can see the CPU usage and memory usage right here in this uh, resource monitor on part of the monitor wizard. The monitor wizard has two parts. You have the setup wizard, which is uh, similar to the uh, in the dashboard. You have the setup wizard right here. It automatically picks it up. Uh, the picks up your settings and uh, gives you option of either uh, how to set up your RAID. And in here, it's very similar. You can do it manually. You can just uh, you can see here. Well, the, you can type it in, or you can uh, just let it pick up your what's uh, automatic settings much more easier let's go back to the resource monitor here at first you can see if we have a volume already that is uh, a file system that is plugged in there it will, it will show on the top and you have a system information that shows the CPU usage in bar form and a percentage and the picture javelin although it's not documented in the manual it actually has an 800 megahertz power PC CPU and about 250 mega megabytes of RAM as you can see here on the graph and it's currently using it's uh, it's only one disk inside using 76 megabyte of that memory that's actually very good for an entry level um, entry level NAS and here you have the network flow you will see this change uh, depending on the traffic and you have the total uptime of your uh, Patriot the last time you restarted or uh, shut it off and here of course the enclosure information you have the simple system temperatures the temperatures of uh, the drive in the drive I'm not sure if it's a drive temperature or the ambient temperature inside but the, I'm more inclined to, to think that is the ambient temperature because uh, the the drives inside my uh, if if I put one of these drives inside my system it will probably average 36 degrees uh, these are Seagate uh, 7200.12 uh, Barracuda one terabyte drives a single platter uh, one terabyte drives uh, double platter rather they're 500 gigabyte per platter and here you have the system fan and uh, it's rolling right now at uh, you can see the rpm level it's done for 440 rpm and idle and uh, let's actually skip to raid file system and i'll just um, demonstrate quickly since uh, some of the features aren't, don't seem to be available i will i'll create a raid volume and uh, i'll create a raid zero volume right now we have a single a raid zero stripe with only one one uh, one drive as you can see, it detects the second drive we have installed as a free disk, and I've only set up one volume. Here you can see in the tab, modify, create, and delete, and recover. Recover is grayed out right now, you can't see it. Now I have, I have it set to just one disk and uh, raise zero because there's no option to JVOD, so just leave it alone. It, will, it wants to always format something, it wants to, it wants to uh, format the drive to raise zero always. So. Uh, one DJ did this so that so that you can have the option of modify and and create, so you can uh, you can compare. For now, I'm uh, going to demonstrate what the modify area is. Here, you can convert uh, the the you can migrate the, the RAID level. 
and you, you have it in zero, you can add a, a second free disk and then move it to RAID 1. And uh, note that migration takes a long time. I tried uh, the, when I tried migrating from uh, RAID 0 to with the two disk RAID 0 to uh, uh, RAID 1, it took about uh, four hours. So depending on the size of your drive, it can take a long time. And you will see it in the status window. Or once it's uh, when it, when uh, you can see it in the status window, you can see the background activity, whether it's formatting or uh, or migrating still. And uh, the create, of course, you can. We have one available disk. You can just create here in the next. Uh, you can create a spare disk or a RAID zero. And of course, delete is delete the volume available. I'm going to do that because I want to show you how to do a two RAID. How easy it is to do the RAID of two drives here. And once I click uh, the delete RAID here that I've selected, one volume, and it gives you an option to delete the RAID and it says, it gives you a warning, deleting the RAID will delete all existing data and settings. Type yes to delete a RAID. So you type yes in there to verify. See here's the process window. It takes a little short time. And uh, while we're doing that, we can go back to the dashboard and uh, you can click here again. It will reflect the changes that we are doing. See it's busy right now because it's busy as well here on the, uh, on the web control. There we go, finally we are back. And as you can see there, we have two free disks. And and all the option for modify is grayed out now. We only have the option to create. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna create uh, RAID 0. Or you can do create RAID 1. And throw one spare disk. If you leave both, uh, both of them in spare disk, you will not be able to access it. So we're going to do RAID 0. And select the disks you want to move. So we want two of them in RAID 0 for performance. So click OK. So we'll take, it's very quick actually. It will, uh, it doesn't seem to do a low level format. There's a quick format. And uh, it's not, it does the, I, I believe it does the XF, XFS uh, file format. It's, uh, it's a very flexible file format compiled with uh, multiple operating systems. As you can see there, the format status is read for formatting. And while it's doing this, uh, Whenever uh, the drive has been has been activated in the NAS, you can see the in the Patriot Javelin that the two uh, hard drive activities, uh, hard drive um, detecting LEDs are turned on, and the activity LEDs will be flashing. So right now, they're they're very. If you have one disk as a spare designated as a spare, it will be the there's there will be no LED there even though that slot is populated. So I'll wait for that. Should, should, since we're, we're only doing a quick format, shouldn't take that long. See, so if you click right now on the file system management, we can't access anything, and we'll show you that the system is busy. So go back there and go back to monitor wizard. You can see the uh, CPU usage it takes and the memory usage. See, it doesn't take much. It's very economical uh, the way this uh, file system is, is handling things. There we go. And finally, we uh, see the back activity none. That means that we finally, uh, so you can see there's no option left except delete. Of course, we're not going to do that. I'm just going to show you what it looks like. Here you can delete it again. Just hit cancel if you don't want to touch it. And go back to uh, file system management. Here you have the option of extending the file system and assign a particular capacity on your uh, RAID volume. Here's the iSCSI management. And uh, here you can either disable or enable. The default is actually disabled, but I've enabled it uh, so trying it out. But uh, I, have not, I won't really have a use for it in our, my tests, so you can just leave it disabled. And it will, you can, if you create it here, you can modify and create the tabs at the back. Just to show you, you can create from the volume that is available in this designated capacitor and the type uh, in terms of uh, the protection. Of course, just cancel and uh, Let's go back up again, Monitor Wizard. Here you go, you can see the volume once again and the capacity. It's now, of course, the two drives combined. And uh, we're not doing anything, so the usage is zero. And the user groups here is, uh, let me just move this so you can see it easier. The user groups area allows you to, the admin is the default one or the guest. You can uh, you can create a specific user. You look, for example, you have a you have a larger 
network. Uh, you only have more than, you have more than one computers in the network that are accessing the nodes. You can uh, create user here, in particular instead of just having a guest, which is a little bit, a little bit unsafe compared to having a, a specific user uh, logging on. So if you have you can also group them. Uh, if you're running a small office and you're using the Javelin S4, you can use that. And you have the quota. But here you can limit uh, the amount of uh, data used here. And of course the file print. You can use a uh, print server or file server. Here's the available option. The print server is currently off since we uh, it will it's off because we don't have any uh, a printer plugged in. But if you have a printer plugged in there, well, you can enable it. But you can see that the Windows, Mac, FTP, and Unix, Linux uh, are the status designated as on. And you can disable it here quickly. And just the specific options here in the corner for each one. Uh, here's the Windows. Of course, it's enabled. You can also disable it here. You, know, you can also use make it use as recycle bin or not, and the type of of uh, network one, the AD domain or work group, and the domain or work group name. As for Mac, you can also have the option here. FTP sharing, because the default is 21, okay. and you can also add an encryption. And as for Unix and Linux, same thing. It's off right here, and the picture service is shared out. So, see with that. And here is the file sharing option under file and print. You have the service status, you can disable it from if you want additional safety, you're for example only running Windows, you can disable Linux and uh, Macintosh so that those computers can't access it. Or disable FTP here as well. So uh, more uh, using faster boot time or uh, lighter running NAS. Uh, disable services that you don't need. Here you can uh, disable uh, each folder created in the volume. The, the Patriot Jabber actually creates these folders automatically uh, for each volume. You have to download music, picture, public, upload video and World Wide Web. It's automatic since it's a media server. It automatically creates these folders. And you can actually also create a specific folder and a designated volume. For example, if you have two, uh, you do a, a pair of RAID zeros. So four drives, two of each in one uh, RAID zero. So you can have two volumes and you can designate a folder here for specific folder name and the type of shared file system for each one. The so XFS is compatible with all of those or you can just uh, Disable the file system that you want, yeah, the, the shared file system in there, to have it create a specific one for the uh, uh, for the OS that you have, uh, you're using. Also, you can remove some of the folders that you don't want. As you can see, the default folders can't be removed; only the custom ones. There's no option to select the download music and public folder because some of the uh, plugins and the features of the Jav built-in features of the Javelin S4 actually make use of those. So, and move to the next one is the sharing setup. Here you have the, once again, just another uh, more detailed use of, uh, you can either, uh, the guest, you can see the guest access, or default is deny access, or you can have a uh, small lean and do a read only and uh, give, or fully give it a read and write option. You can also, if you added a uh, user here from the, from the user group earlier, you can do the settings access from here. And uh, the next tab is the Unix and Linux sharing options, similar to the Windows Mac FTP sharing option window. As for the application plugin that we saw in the dashboard, uh, here we go. Let's refresh the dashboard once again so you can see. And plugin, as management, plugin takes a while for it to read. Here you go. You can see the plugins here. Similarly in the web PASM you can enable or disable them. The uh, default is the web directory service is off but the uh, built-in uh, DLNA, Firefly, MySQL and uh, BitTorrent are on. Here's the, you can add a particular application plugin right there just uh, either from your system and then uh, upload it to the uh, uh, memory of the Peter Javelin, uh, I think the J Peter Javelin has, uh, I think, uh, 128 megabytes of uh, NAND flash memory to contain these. So that should be more, uh, that should be generous enough for uh, to add uh, several plugins available for 
your uh, Patreon NAS if you want to create or uh, download one from uh, Patreon's website. And let's compare the in the dashboard. You can see it's, a, uh, it's the same thing. You can uh, reinstall, enable. Although, and the add plugin is actually on a separate tab here. Same same idea. You upload or uh, you upload the a new version. Either you want to update the old one or uh, you want to put in a new uh, plugin. You can do it in here. And of course, we've seen the uh, RAID and file system already. Skip that. Now the backup, and uh, you can you can use it to create. Uh, let's go back to the smart sync. In here, if you have a, a backup, you can actually designate the, because here the first drop down is actually your NAS. This is the S4, so we only have one, it only detects one. And you can have it upload to a specific folder. Either you create a folder or one of the pre created pro folders by the Javelin. And uh, just simply drag and drop any folder you want there and schedule it. And uh, similarly, here, if you have one, uh, you can take a, a scheduled backup. You can see the, the information in this window once you do it. And you can have it scheduled here. You have there's some predetermined uh, schedule here. You have to you do it once, time and trouble by hour, every a few hours, or daily, weekly, and a recovery option. Of course, we don't we didn't back up anything. But if you want to create like an image for a, you want to preserve an image and just have it, uh, and something went wrong, you need to, to recover it in here, is a nice option to have. And of course, the NAS replication, which is because we only have one, is detected as standalone. But if you have multiple javelins inside a network, you can do NAS rep, NAS NAS replication. And here, you can set it up. You can uh, clone it. You can back up your NAS actually. Even if your NAS is a backup already, you can back it up even further. Here's a primary server or a backup server. If you're running a home office, that's very convenient. And as for the one touch backup, backup, which is the button and in front of the javelin. Here you can you can uh, enable or disable it in a USB backup, ESATA backup at the back or client backup. USB backup options are here. Okay, the uh, synchronize. You can synchronize it with the way it, the Javelin backs up the data, or you can uh, add a directory or copy, and also you determine which folder it goes into. And the ESATA backup is similarly the same. As for the network, here these are the auto detected settings and setup is you can. In manually, we'll have it. You can, if you click specify, you can type it in manually, but uh, have it automatically set to detect the IP from the router. And of course, the jumbo frames here. I only, I only have this option. I only have a 10 100 uh, megabit, megabit per second uh, router, just a regular router, and DDNS right here in the end. For management, here is the event log, it's a more detailed option, and mail alert. You can uh, specify email address to send it the alerts to. So more detailed options in here. A system upgrade is a complete firmware upgrade to the Javelin media server. Buzzer LED. If you've seen the video of the um, Javelin booting, you can see there's a very audible buzz at the beginning. Now you can disable or enable it here. Since we, if you can actually just leave it on since uh, you only hear the, the buzz whenever you need to uh, to reboot or uh, boot your javelin for the first time. As for LEDs, you can disable it here if you're annoyed by the uh, blue LEDs. And here is the APC UPS backup. Have it here because the setup is great since we don't have a UPS installed. And the power options. You have the option of turning off your hard disk to save uh, electricity and your power on LAN. Or you need to once you put them to sleep, you can power them on. At LAN activity it detects that. And these are the AC power resume options. You can schedule it or do it uh, with the option of turning on server automatically or the server should remain off when AC power resumes when, just in case when power goes out. Uh, for the final one, is you have the option here. You can set the date and time, time zone, and NTP. And of course, you can have it synced to a, uh, a timer online. Now let's go back to the dashboard and see if we skipped some folders. Here actually the share folder you can uh, now it's working we can actually see the video folder for example you can map it to a particular network drive you can see I have no idea why it's not working right now but uh, this the, there's some bugs with the Javelin that still I believe still need to be worked out this was working earlier I actually mapped a video drive 
if uh, I have the I have it mapped here in Z in uh, my my computer, so it's working. But I don't know why it's not working here. Usually, what will happen is it will pop up there that uh, gives me an option to map it, or if it's mapped already, it will show the particular drive it's mapped to, and it can map the shared folder. There you go. Ah, there we go. You can actually you have to actually click the mount folder, mount share folder here at the bottom. Okay, so select the upload button. You have to you can map it to X and then just click mount. It will mount. Windows will detect it. That's very good. And the media center. Uh, we don't have any files installed, so you won't see anything there right now. You can create uh, music or video playlists to the media library, or the same thing with your photo album, separate from the audio and video. You can do the same thing. And you can manage your album right here. Uh, so the last one is the NAS management. You can see the is a network setting here, similar to what we saw in the um, network setting in the WebPASM. Here you can uh, configure it manually or automatically. Here you can also configure the plugin we saw earlier or uh, add a specific plugin, event log, and then shut down completely. Now it also has a option of uh, in the WebPASM to shut down and reboot your system. Here you have shut down and reboot system and closure uh, information and here you have the uh, voltages and power similar to the uh, minor wizard which is just basically a little bit more detailed than the minor wizard and I think that's about it we covered every single uh, feature of the Javelin S4 control and let's continue on with the review